Chapter 10 Out of Compassion Luang Po and the Lay Community One by one, little by little, moment by moment, the wise should remove their own impurities, as a smith removes the dross from silver. Dhammapada verse 239 On several occasions, the Buddha exhorted the Sangha. Wander forth, O monks, for the welfare of the many folk, for the happiness of the many folk, out of compassion for the world, for the good, welfare and happiness of devas and humans. And when lay people were inspired by his teachings, they would exclaim, Excellent, Lord, excellent! It is as if, Lord, a man were to set upright that which was overturned, or were to reveal that which was hidden, or were to point out the way to one who had gone astray, or were to hold a lamp amidst the darkness so that those who have eyes may see. Even so has the doctrine been explained in various ways by the exalted one. I take refuge, Lord, in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha. May the exalted one receive me as a lay follower, as one who has taken refuge from this very day to life's end. And in the Diga Nikaya Sutta 31, the Buddha explains, How does the monk minister to the lay Buddhists? By discouraging them from evil, by encouraging them in goodness, by assisting them with loving kindness, by giving them new knowledge, by clarifying the teachings they have heard before, by showing them the path to happiness. Part 1. Introduction Appreciating the kindness and assistance that one has received in one's life and making efforts to express that appreciation in appropriate ways in Pali, Katanyu Katavedi, are, together with generosity, probably the Buddhist virtues most deeply embedded in Thai society. They are clearly apparent in relationships between sons and daughters with their parents and guardians, and in the respect paid to teachers and benefactors of any description. In Thailand, Bun Kun, the ties and obligations perceived to have been created between people by beneficial actions underlies most meaningful social intercourse, including that between members of the Sangha and the laity. In early 1954, it was the request made by a deputation of villagers, led by his mother, which persuaded Luang Po Cha that the time had come to establish a forest monastery near his home village. The villagers' formal invitation and Luang Po's acceptance of it reflects well the nature of the relationship between the Sangha and the laity envisioned by the Buddha. The tradition holds that any teaching by monks, even a single Dhamma talk, must always be initiated by the laity. They must want to be taught. It's for this reason that Buddhist monastics are not evangelists. They only speak Dhamma to those who have shown a sincere interest in listening to it and have asked them to teach. Like many forest monks, Luang Po had long harboured plans to eventually return to the place of his birth and propagate the Dhamma there. But it was only when he received a formal invitation from representatives of the local lay community that he felt conditions were ripe for him to do so. For Luang Po, the establishment of a monastery was the natural, almost inevitable next step of his life as a monk. He had reached a level of practice with which he was confident there could be no regress. He was in the prime of his life, and a growing number of monks looked to him as their teacher. Furthermore, he was aware that if he was to help his mother to make progress in the Dhamma, he should not leave it for too much longer. Living as a monk, he knew that such assistance was the way, the only way he could truly repay his great debt of gratitude to her. In his discourses, the Buddha repeatedly encourages monks to seek out solitude and to be wary of entanglement with lay supporters. At the same time, 
the number of teachings outlining the correct and incorrect nature of the relationship between monks and laypeople suggests that there was considerable contact between them. For example, certain means of rendering assistance to lay people are forbidden as being likely to reduce the respect in which the Sangha is held. Monks are not allowed to act as doctors because to do so would mean that they become perceived as healers of the body rather than the mind. They are warned against developing so close a relationship with lay people that he laughs when they laugh, he cries when they cry. It is clear from such guidelines that the Buddha gave considerable importance to creating a framework in which the Sangha could exert the maximum positive influence on society without compromising its own integrity. Chief amongst the tasks of a monastic in this regard is to uphold the teachings through personal example and to instruct the laity who wish to understand the Dhamma. In the suttas, there are references to the inadvisability of monks with no insight trying to teach others. Such a monk is compared to a person sinking in the mud trying to teach someone else how to climb out of it. But having said that, it's taken for granted that the accumulation of knowledge and experience should issue in its sharing. As a mendicant order, the Sangha is dependent upon local communities for material sustenance and for new members. A monastery will only thrive when its inhabitants gain the respect and devotion of their lay supporters. This occurs naturally when monastics determine to lead their lives in such a way as to provide a field of merit for their supporters and when they lead and inspire them on the Buddhist path through example and instruction. This reciprocal relationship is underpinned by many vinaya training rules and observances that prevent monasteries from becoming materially independent. For example, there are rules prohibiting digging the earth, cooking, the consumption of unoffered food, and the storing of food overnight. All such rules compel monks to have daily contact with the laity, at the very least on their daily alms round. The degree to which the Buddha took the laity into account when announcing new Vinaya rules is made clear from a prominent element of his reasoning for doing so. The arousing of faith in those without it and the strengthening of faith in those who already possess it. In establishing a monastery near his birthplace, Lung Po sought not only to create an excellent training environment for monastics, but also a center for propagating the Dhamma amongst the local villages and towns. He realized that the two goals were not only compatible, but could reinforce each other. It was through faith in the monk's integrity that people would start to come to the monastery to hear the Dhamma. It was through promoting authentic Buddhist values in society that the long-term welfare of the Sangha was secured. Lung Po's teachings for the laity rested upon the same foundation as those for the Sangha, namely the Four Noble Truths. His talks invariably returned to the question of suffering, how it arose and how it could be brought to cessation. His instructions on meditation practice were scarcely different from those he gave to the monastics. The differences that could be discerned appeared in the areas where he adapted his treatment of key issues such as the development of right view and the importance of moral conduct to address the particular challenges faced by householders. In the mid-1950s, when Lung Po established Wat Ba Pong, almost all the people of Ubon considered themselves Buddhist. And yet, it was rare to find those who did not also ascribe to conflicting non-Buddhist beliefs of one sort or another. Few people took the five precepts as their moral standard. For this reason, in the early pioneering days, Lung Po concentrated on combating local superstitions and explaining the basic principles of Dhamma so as to instill right view. He taught the local people the meaning of the Triple Gem and what taking refuge in it meant. He encouraged them to give up harmful social vices such as alcohol and gambling and to establish themselves in right livelihood and morality. 
he encouraged them to come to the monastery on the weekly observance day, where they could take a break from their usual routines, rest, read, listen to Dhamma talks, and practice meditation.